Hi, I'm Chris Converse and I'm here at Adobe Max. And I want to take a few minutes to show you a couple of ways you can go from Photoshop to Acrobat and create PDFs. I want to show three workflows. I want to show one that seems rather simple, which is Save As, but there's some cool things we can do with Save As and keeping compatibility with Photoshop. We're going to take a look at layer comps, and we're going to take a look at PDF presentation, which is one of the scripts inside of Photoshop. Uh, so let's first begin by coming into a Photoshop composition and just quickly looking at Save As. So I have a Photoshop file open here. So this is a butterfly design. This is actually part of a campaign for a charitable um, fundraising site uh, it's called the Butterfly Effect. And so what, what happens here is designers will design different butterflies, print them out, and basically drop them and do a geocaching with, with um, people in their communities. So one of the challenges here is to have different designs. Um, so the first thing we want to do is do a save as and get this into a PDF format, but I want to retain some of the Photoshop editing capabilities. So we can look at this in Reader and Acrobat Pro, but if I bring it back to Photoshop, I can still do some edits. So very simply, for the first example, we're going to choose File Save As. I'm going to choose my desktop, and down under the format, we're going to come down and choose Photoshop PDF. I'm going to choose to not embed a color profile. We'll keep alpha channels and layers turned on. And now we'll simply come over and hit Save. Now Photoshop is going to let us know that the underlying PDF creation inside of all of the Creative Cloud applications can actually override the settings inside of Photoshop, which is good. This means we have a unified way to create all PDFs throughout the Creative Cloud. So I'm going to come in here and click OK. Next, we're going to be presented with our PDF creation dialog box, which looks the same in all of the Creative Cloud applications. And what I want to do is make sure that I check this option here called Preserve Photoshop Editing Capabilities. So this will result in a larger PDF file. However, all of the editing capabilities for Photoshop will be retained. So I'll simply come in here and hit Save PDF. It's going to let me know that this will only work in the latest couple of versions of Photoshop. And that's OK. We'll click Yes. And now on the desktop, we're going to get a PDF file that's going to have all of that editing capability inside. So we'll give this just a second to save out. While this is saving out, what I'm going to do is I'll close the Photoshop file once it's done, and we'll take a look at this inside of Acrobat. One thing I want to make sure is that all of the design integrity is in place, all of the textures, everything that went into uh, Kim's design here for the butterfly is viewable inside of the PDF. So we got our PDF on the desktop. Let's open it up. I'll just simply double click this. So here we are inside of Acrobat Pro. I'm going to come in here and change the resolution to about 200%. With my hand tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag, and notice we can see all of the detail inside of here. So this looks fantastic. Any of our art directors or clients or colleagues can come in here, review. We can send this out, share it. Uh, but the real key here is the original uh, PDF file that we just got can be brought back into Photoshop. So I'm going to grab and grab this PDF and drag this right into Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we're going to be looking at the PDF. And what we're going to see inside of Photoshop is the PDF will retain all of its original editing capabilities. So it can be seen and edited and all the things we can do in Acrobat. But we come back into Photoshop and notice we have all of our layers, all of our content, all of our smart objects, live type layers, anything that we put inside of the original Photoshop file is still accessible, but still wrapped inside of a PDF file. Now, if we wanted to have a smaller PDF to do sharing or emailing, we can do the same process, save as, and uncheck the box that says retain uh, PDF capabilities, or retain Photoshop editing capabilities. So for the next example, let's take a look at a great feature inside of Photoshop to help designers explore different design options. And this is a feature called Layer Comps. Now to open the Layer Comps panel, you can go to the Window menu and come down and choose Layer Comps. And what Layer Comps do is they give us the ability to basically capture the state of the entire Layers panel. So anything that we change that's non-destructive, such as uh, the position of a layer, applying effects, which would be things like drop shadows, color overlays, um, and, and the position and opacity settings, anything non-destructive can all be saved. Um, so what I want to do is start off by taking a look at the design in its current state. So this is what we had from earlier. And so this looks pretty good. So what I want to do is come over to the Layer Comps panel, come down here and click on New Layer Comp. So what this is going to do is basically capture the state of the entire Layers panel. So in here we're going to call this Design 01. And we want to track the visibility, position, and appearance, all of the non-destructive aspects of layers. So now we're going to click OK. And now we have a brand new Design 01 layer inside of our document. 
Now we want to explore a couple of other design options inside of our file. And the advantage of using layer comps is that we don't have to duplicate our Photoshop file or duplicate a whole bunch of layers. We can change the layers sort of in place and capture those states in the layer comps. So the first thing I might want to do is let's get rid of the nails in here. I want to see a version of this, this uh, design that doesn't have the nails in the, uh, in the wings here. So I'm going to come down to the layers panel here. Let's come down and find the nails. So I put all the nails in a layer group. So I'm going to come in here and just simply hide the nails layer. We'll see the nails go away. And the thing to pay attention to in the layer comps panel is the icon next to design one changed back to the last document state. So basically what this is telling us is that we are no longer looking at layer comp one, we're looking at the document state. And that's great news. I'm not going to do anything in the layer comps panel yet. Let's come down and make a few more changes. I'm going to select the move tool, which is the letter V. Hold the command or control key to click and find this texture. Another thing I want to change is the texture has this sort of circular shape here, but that visually to me is sort of interfering with some of the other circular shapes like the screws and the, uh, the gas cap here. So what I want to do is just move the texture a little bit. So I'm going to come over here into the layers panel, make sure that I don't have this linked to the mask. And I'm going to click and drag and I'm just going to move the position of that texture here. So now I can't see that circle. You can hold the command key, control on windows, I'm going to click the other texture, I'll unlink the mask, and I'm going to do the same thing, I'm just going to move this over this way. And we're going to do one more thing here. I want to make the uh, background rust just a little stronger. So I'm going to come down here above the rust layer, and I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. So I come up and choose hue saturation. I'm going to clip group this into that layer, and we'll come up here and just really increase the saturation. I just really want to make that red just really strong. So I've made a bunch of these changes. I'm going to go back to the layer comps panel. I'm going to hit new layer comp, and we're going to call this design underscore zero two, and then press return or click OK. So now, if I want to see the original layout, I can come back here and just activate design comp one. The nails come back, the repositioned textures come back, the adjustment layer goes away. This is the original state when I first saved that layer comp. Coming over to design two, everything in that file changes back to show me the particular state of this comp. And so if we introduce new layers into our Photoshop file, we can modify our layer comps as well. So one thing I might want to try is adding a different texture for the base of the butterfly altogether. So let's go back to our files. I'm going to grab this uh, rusted metal JPEG file. Let's just drag and drop this into place. By doing that, we'll get a smart object inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to position this. I'll scale it, move it around. I'm going to clip group it into the same shape. I'm going to come in and add another adjustment layer to this. We'll do hue, hue saturation again. I'm going to really saturate this, and I might even just offset the hue completely. If we just drag this up and just come, just come in here and just create a completely different look. So I've added new layers into the document as well. Come back to the layer comps panel, and we'll call this design underscore zero three. So again, we can now quickly click through each one of these pieces. So really fast way to work inside of Photoshop. I'm actually going to clip group the layer in there so we don't have the hue saturation messing up the, uh, the branding of the piece. And so now with all of these in place, not only does this give me, again, a really quick and non-destructive way to explore new design options in Photoshop, but now we can come up to the file menu, we can come down to export, and we can choose layer comps to PDF. In previous versions of Photoshop, this was found under the script menu. You would go scripts, export, and layer comps to PDF, but now this is inside of the export menu. So I'm going to come down here and choose that. From this dialog box here, Photoshop will give me the chance to choose where I want to save this. So I'll click the Browse button and just choose the desktop. I'm going to call this designreview.pdf. We're going to click Save. I'm going to uncheck the slideshow options. I don't want this to run in the slideshow, but I could. And I'll just come in here and simply hit Run. So now what Photoshop's going to do is it's going to go through the document and find all the states of those layers, re-enable everything that I've changed, adjustment layers, positioning, opacity, anything non-destructive, save each one of those compositions as a new page in a multi-page PDF file. So then I can just immediately share this out with my clients. Once I have that, I can send this out for shared review, I can send this out for digital signatures, I can do anything I can do in a regular uh, Acrobat or Document Cloud workflow. So Photoshop's now done. I get a dialog box here that says that was successful. I'll click OK here. I'm going to close my Photoshop file, go to the desktop, and let's open up our brand new design review.
with the design review open, I'll say I don't want to open this in full screen view. I like to set up the initial state of my PDF files, so I'll hit Command D on the Mac or Control D in Windows. That just brings up the document properties. And let's come in here and let's change the navigation to show pages. And the magnification, I like to choose a fit page. And for the layout, we'll choose, I like single page. I'll click OK. Save. I'm going to close it and just open it up again so we can make sure that all took effect. So I open this up. My pages panel shows up. We're in fit screen view. And now I can click between the pages and see all of the different designs. So I got a three page PDF from a single set of layer comps inside of Photoshop. And so with that, I want to take a look at one more feature. Um, let's say I do have designs from multiple designers and I want to bring all those together into a PDF file and I want to use Photoshop to generate it, just like we've been doing. So I have a folder down here where we have a series of designs from different designers. So if I go through these, we can see different designs, different textures and patterns being used as each uh, designer sort of imagines their butterfly for this particular charity. And each one of these is a Photoshop file. So I don't want to open each one and have to save as or export or make layer comps in each one. I have them already. I just want to put them together. So what we can do inside of Photoshop is come up to the Photoshop.